This is the 7th of April of 2021. And before I go further, we're going to pray. Father, I ask you to keep it quiet outside. I ask you to keep it quiet and cool inside. Father, I ask you to touch this recording that that it continues to record and uploads without any hiccups and without any distractions or interruptions. Father, I ask that only your word goes out and your message goes out and is blessed to bless the hearers. I ask you to put everyone within the sound of my voice in a hedge of protection and saturate us all with the blood of Christ and give us such a desire to know more of you. We'll continue to search you out. Um, Father, touch my eyes, my speech, my understanding, Father, my optical nerves and my uh, eyesight. In Jesus' name, thank you, Father. Okay, the name of this study is Boundaries. And you'll see after we're done here why, why I've been thinking about this. Okay, first we're going to read uh, Proverbs chapter 8, verse 1. Does not wisdom cry and understanding put forth her voice? Woo! Hallelujah. Okay, so when I think about boundaries, you know, I think about the, the boundaries that God gave to us humans, to the land, to the sea, to all the waters, to the animals, to the birds of the air, you know, to tribes, to people, to human relationships, to marriage. This is what I think about. Okay, so boundaries in personal relationships are needed for a healthy personal well-being. So uh, this way we separate our identities, responsibility, and privileges. This is what creates expectations and shows respect. So healthy boundaries says what's acceptable and what's not acceptable. So uh, biblical boundaries are approved by God and we see that in Titus 2 and then verse 12 Titus 2 and verse 12 thank you Holy Spirit teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts we should live soberly righteously and godly in this present world and remember uh, God told us to be holy like he is holy you know, it doesn't mean walking around oh, 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 and, and being, you know, saturated with oils and stuff like that or having a beanie on your hat and wheeling at the wheeling wall. It doesn't mean that. It doesn't mean having dresses down to the floor and never showing any skin. God didn't say that. God didn't talk like that. No. What he wants is a relationship with you, which means it's a circumcision of the heart now. It's not a circumcision of, your, of a man's foreskin. So we have to think of those things now and, be, and put them in perspective when you're looking at the Word of God. Learn the hermeneutics of the, of, the, uh, of, the, of the Bible times. Learn the culture of that time and who the Word was speaking to. And, you know, these things will help you understand more. Plus, having a relationship with Jesus and the infilling of His Holy Spirit will lead and guide and teach you. See? Hallelujah. So we see healthy boundaries helps us keep ungodly, worldly influences out. Let's look at this. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14. 2 Corinthians 6. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And then verse 14. 2 Corinthians 6, 14. Um, be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers, for that what fellowship has righteousness with unrighteousness, and what communion had light with darkness. Woo! He's telling you about boundaries here. Here's the point of the study. Okay, we are to run from evil. Even James tells us this. Go back and look at James chapter 4, verse 7 and 8. James 4, right after Hebrews. Verse 7 and 8. Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. And you know what double-minded is. In fact, I have a video up, if you look down my list, about double-mindedness. And, and it's like when God tells you to do something, there's an example. When God tells you to do something and someone else comes along and says, I think God would like it this way. Or it would be easier this way. And then you change it. See, 
excuse me, <laughs> brought my notes. You know, if you go and change it, that's being double-minded. When God tells you to, to do something specific about it, do it. And am I saying it's always easy? Oh, no, I've learned it's not always easy. But the outcome is so awesome when you do listen to him. Hallelujah. I know that for a fact. Okay. Okay, so when people are being destructive, we must limit the evil they commit against us. We have to take the responsibility to set boundaries and say no no and we've been taught way too many times from a child on up being it's disrespectful and it's rude to say no <laughs> learn that word you are able to say no and it is not disrespectful hallelujah okay and uh, let's see here where we at but you know the thing the fact is we have the choice we have the choice. So let's look at uh, Romans chapter 6, verse 23. Romans 6. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And verse 23. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Hallelujah. So boundaries limits destructive behavior, okay? Uh, this is why God set rulers in place, in fact. Okay, let's look at that. Romans 13, verse 3. Romans chapter 13 and verse 3. For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to evil. Wilt thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. Obviously, you know, like nowadays, especially even back in biblical times, there was people put in power to do God's bidding, and God put them there, but they decided through bribery or through whatever means, you know, that, that they decided their way was right, and uh, and to go ahead, you know what I mean, and go ahead and listen to the evil side, and, and uh, not cultivate that relationship they had with Christ. Because once you get infiltrated with um, the cares of the world, the riches, the money, the bribery, and all that, whoa, whoa, whoa to you. Okay, so this goes for marriages too, and staying inside the marriage boundaries keeps trust alive, and not only that, it keeps disease out of the marriage. Hallelujah. So an individual with healthy boundaries will take the responsibility for their own life and will allow others to live their lives as well. That means that you know where you end and that person begins. In a marriage uh, relationship, you know where your feelings start and theirs start. You know what I mean? And you're not intertwining them. So you have to have boundaries, boundaries set up. So truly, when we accept boundaries, we, um, we understand that others are different and yet still valuable. Awesome. Uh, so God uses boundaries to help us appreciate the differences in people rather than being upset with them that's nice to know for sure a godly friend tells us what we need to hear not always what we want to hear see let's look at proverbs chapter 27 verse 5 and 6 proverbs hallelujah 27 Thank you, Holy Spirit. Verse 5 and 6. Proverbs 27, verse 5 and 6. Uh, open rebuke is better than secret love. Faithful are the wounds of a friend, but the kisses of an enemy are deceitful. And you know, my thing is nowadays, and I say this a lot anymore, I would rather have you angry with me on earth Rather than me stand up before my creator in front of him and say, you know, he say, uh, why didn't you say that? You know, uh, why didn't you show that? Why didn't you share that? Why didn't you tell the truth? And then I say, ah, 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 So he's going to question me. And I don't want him to be angry with me. I'd rather for someone on earth to be angry with me. 
Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. So remember, um, in a godly relationship, people are free to be themselves, to love each other without fear of being used, controlled, or manipulated. Okay, boundaries can be difficult to establish. Oh, yes. Because, see, we're taught from a young age, well, it's rude, and it's not nice to tell them no. And uh, you can't tell somebody they can't touch you. No, 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 no. You better learn a difference here. What's godly and what's not godly. And teach your children, too. Okay. Um, now, God tells us uh, to humbly control ourselves, lovingly confront sin, and graciously accept others, and overcome evil with good. Okay. God will lead and guide us. I mean, that's obviously, and that's always, through His Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. We're going to look at Ephesians chapter 4, verse 14 and 15. Ephesians. Ooh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ali, hallelujah. Ephesians 4, 14 and 15. Okay. That we henceforth be no more children tossed to and from and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. But speaking the truth in love, they grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Like I said, I'd rather have someone here angry with me than God angry with me. Okay. So here's five types of boundaries for relationship. One is physical boundaries and when we talk about physical boundaries it's your body it's your personal space it, your uh, privacy okay the second one is emotional boundaries which are when you uh, start feeling the other's emotions you need to reevaluate that's why I was starting to say earlier you need to reevaluate that relationship because it's not good to always feel someone else's emotions okay reevaluate your feelings you need to know where your emotions start and where the other person starts we need to try and help the other person but not take on their feelings and emotional you know their emotions and that, that is so true we start doing that and then we lose all, lose all perspective of ourselves and what's actually happening Okay, the third one is sexual boundaries. Establish healthy boundaries within intimacy can bring your marriage alive emotionally. And if, you, if you're if you bothered by certain sexual things, discuss them with your spouse. That's a first and foremost. So there are boundaries within a marriage even. With all of this can relate to a marriage. Okay, um, so the fourth thing is intellectual boundaries. This is this encompasses ideas and beliefs. So boundaries need to be set um, for respect of different views and ideas. So this can keep you from feeling devalued and disrespected. Okay, because when you start losing respect for that person, okay, so you start losing res truly respect for that person when they start devaluing and uh, degrading you, belittling you. No, that's not good. Don't let no one do that. You are a child of God. You are a royal priesthood. You are set apart. You are separated from this world system, and now it's up to us to make that decision. Hallelujah. So in order to get respect, you have to give respect. So remember that also. All right, so number five financial boundaries so this is all about money obviously okay so uh, always discuss your goals with your spouse and your expectations you know as well as your needs and your wants and your wishes and your vacations and obviously things like that but you don't go that means that you don't go out and spend a hundred dollars or two hundred dollars or whatever the set limit is between the two of you to not overgo you know got oh that go overgo that uh balance or that limit you know, so anyways, work that out between the two of you. 
Okay, so for sure, boundaries help your relationships function effectively. Okay, so when you notice that you are feeling disrespected, take taken advantage of or hurt, you might want to put in place some boundaries. Okay, this could very well improve your relationships and all relationships, not just a marriage relationship or your co-workers or your boss, you know, all of them. This could save, this could save any relationships, actually. So um, this brings us back to waking up in the morning, wake up expecting to keep your peace and joy. And here's what this is all about, too. It's about keeping your peace and your joy. Uh, remember, um, I didn't put it down here, but remember J Jesus said, you know, go into towns and villages. He sent the his disciples, long, you know, before him to the the places that he intended to go. And he told them, if you're not accepted, shake off the dust from your feet as a, as a sign toward these people. You know, pick up your joy and continue on. If somebody hurts you or if you're in a relationship that's toxic, get rid of that relationship. Get out of that relationship. Move on. Look for Christ. Focus on Christ alone. You shake off those feelings. You shake off those negative emotions. The, the curses are negative emotions. So you shake off those and you pick up your joy because it is up to you to decide if you want to be joyful. If you want to be peaceful. If you want to uh, focus on Christ. It's your decision. It's your decision to follow him. It's your decision to accept him. It's your decision to go a second step and say, Father, fill me with Holy Spirit with evidence of speaking in tongues. I want all of your gifts. It's your decision. Okay, and look down my list. It explains that too about Holy Spirit being a second step. And so uh, if I remember underneath this video, I'll, uh, I'll paste my study on Holy Spirit being the second, Holy Spirit indwelling with evidence of speaking in tongues being a second step. So look for that. So it's all about choice. Okay. So you have to choose to not let others control your mood or your emotions. And that's another thing that boundaries do because you're saying, no, you can go this far and you can't go no further. You're not going to control me. I'm not going to get upset at you or with you. Or And actually, you are letting off the person who is, by the way, every one of us are imperfect because we live in an imperfect body, a corruptible body in a corrupted world. So you're letting an imperfect person off the hook. You're, not, you're, you're realizing that they are them and you accept them. Then in turn, you are you and you can accept you. And they can accept you or they can leave you. They can walk away. Same thing. See, we have the choice to control our emotions or like our outbursts, our angers, our love, our hatred. You know, all those things, which by the way, Jesus says in his word, if you forgive not, it's Matthew, if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will I forgive you your trespasses in front of my father and his holy angels. You can look that, on, that one up. So praise Jesus. I'm in control of how I act. And, I, and I'm not moved by my feelings or anyone else's feelings. Okay? So in effect, scripture tells us to guard our heart. And we can see that in Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23. Proverbs 4, verse 23. Let me look for it. Proverbs 4. And verse 23, keep your, keep thine heart with all diligence for out of it are the issues of life. See, whoo, Solomon knew. In other words, offenses will come, but don't take the bait. Don't get upset. Jesus tells us, whoa, offenses must come to blow to that one that offenses comes to. Let's look at Matthew 18, verse 7. Matthew chapter 18, verse 7. Hallelujah. Matthew 18, 7. Woe unto the world because of offenses, for it must needs be that offenses come. But woe to that man by whom the offense cometh. Which means you have the choice to get angry and 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 uh and uh get a revenge. See, God says I'm I'm the avenger. 
Don't take it into your own hands in, in that case there. Okay, so don't take it in your, can't, your own hands, period. So forgive. See, Matthew 6, 14 to 15 is, I think that's the one I just uh, quoted to you. But we will look at it again. Matthew 6, 15 and 14 and 50. Matthew 6. Verses 14 and 15. For if ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if ye forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Hallelujah. So here's why making boundaries are godly. And let's look at some scriptures here. There's actually um, five of them, but we're going to randomly look at them. Let's look at Exodus 23. We're going to look at two of them, rather. Verse 31 to 33. Exodus right back here 23 hallelujah 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 Exodus 23 verse 31 wow 23 where are you at pages taken together verses 31 to 33 Exodus 23, 31 to 33. And I will set thy boundaries from the Red Sea, even unto the Sea of the Philistines, and from the desert unto the river. For I will deliver the inhabitants of the land into your hand, and thou shalt drive them out before thee. Thou shalt make no covenant with them, nor with their gods. They shall not dwell in thy land, lest they make thee sin against me. For if thou serve their gods, it will surely be a snare unto thee. And let's look at Job chapter 38, 11. Job 38, 11. Ah, let me see if I remember where Job is at. Job. Where are you at, Job? Job, Job, Job. <laughs> I know he's about in the middle of the uh, book. Yep, yep, yep. Right before Psalms. Job. Thirty-eight, eleven. Hallelujah. Job thirty-eight, eleven. And said, Here too shalt thou come, and no further, and... Here shall thy proud waves be stayed. See what I start when I first opened up the uh, study here? It remind me of the sea and the waves and land. How oh, amen. All right, then uh, the other, to see, the last one here we're going to look at out of these five is Acts 17 and then verse 26. Let's go look at Acts. Whoops, Acts 17. And then verse 26, and then the other couple here, I'll go ahead and put them in the description. Acts 17, 26. And has made of one blood all nations of men for to dwell on all the face of the earth, and has determined the times before appointed and the bounds and their habitation. See, that's uh, boundaries. So if you got set up boundaries, how can they be wrong? Okay, but I wanted to ask why. So let's look at this. And I got three of them here. So first one we're going to look at means we're in the Old, uh, New Testament. John chapter 2 verse 24. John chapter 2. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Verse 24. But Jesus did not commit himself unto them because he knew all men. See, he set boundaries. Jesus set boundaries. He knew the heart of men. He's not going to accept what they say or their testimony about him. Let's look at uh, Exodus 34, verse 24. Exodus 34. Thank you, Holy Spirit abundantly thank you holy spirit exodus 34 then verse 24 exodus 34 and verse 24 
All right. For I will cast out the nations before thee and enlarge thy borders. Neither shall any man desire thy land when thou shalt go up to appear before the Lord thy God thrice in the year. See, here's what he's saying. Boundaries, boundaries, boundaries. And the other one we already read, I'm pretty sure. Let me look at this because there's only one more here. 23, Exodus 23, verses 29 to 30. He's very, very specific here. If you just learn, just study the word. Exodus 23, verse 29. Exodus 23. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit, in fact. 23, verse 29 and 30. Exodus 23, 29 and 30. I will not drive them out from before thee in one year, lest the land become desolate, and the beasts of the field multiply against thee. By little and little I will drive them out from before thee until thou be increased and inherit the land. Here's what he's saying. This is the reason why he set boundaries. Hallelujah. So my point is that sometimes, in fact, periodically, we all need to examine ourselves and our motives and where our walk with Christ Jesus is. So we all know that our heart is not naturally inclined toward God. So really, even King David knew this. Okay, let's look at Psalms 119. And then verses 36 and 37, Psalms 119. Hallelujah. Psalms 119, verse 36 and 37. 36 and 37. Incline my heart unto thy testimonies and not to covetousness. Turn away mine eyes from beholding vanity and quicken thou me in thy ways. Woo! See, he even knew that the, that the, the, his heart was set aside because it says, incline my heart towards you, oh God. And that's the one I was originally looking for, the, the scripture rather. And I, um, I didn't find it, so it will. Now that it came to me directly, it will. So in conclusion, boundaries are important because they set guidelines of how you want to be treated. They can, in the truth, ensure mutual respect in relationships i i pray that you got something out of my message here and i'm going to look up put it in i'll put that scripture i was talking about david said incline my heart uh and then the the description also father in the name of jesus christ i thank you for the time that we sat at your feet and studied your word i thank you for you keeping it quiet outside and quiet and cool inside father i thank you that the recorder continued to record properly until your message was sent out. Father, I ask that this goes to every person that you want it to go to around the world. Father, I thank you once again for learning of your word and your Holy Spirit that leads, guides, and directs in Jesus' name. Give us all such a desire to know more of you. We don't stop here. We continue to search. Bless our hearts with, with uh, your blessings. And... I just thank you, Father. I thank you. In Jesus' name, amen.